The purpose of this video is to introduce you to the Arduino IDE, which is the integrating environment where you do your programming. We're also going to write our first program, download it to the Arduino, and we're going to work with some LEDs. Uh, and this is all in preparation to get us where now we can start uh, writing programs to read sensors and log data. If you look over here at the Arduino, I have the Arduino Uno R3 set up. You're going to need that or a compatible board, a breadboard, an LED. Here I have a red version, but any color would be fine. And a 220 ohm resistor. You'll also need your USB cable uh, to interface with your computer and a couple of at least two or three jumper wires uh, that we'll use to make the connection to the LED. If you have that in hand, you'll be ready to move forward. Now, the first thing you need to do if you haven't done so already is download the Arduino IDE. Just type Arduino IDE download into Google and uh, you'll get to this page very rapidly. The current release is Arduino 1.6.7, but I want you to use a slightly older version of the uh, and more stable version of the IDE. So let's go down here. You can see previous versions, of the current release. And if you go down here, I think I would use 1.6.4 or the 6.5 version. The Windows installer here is a good choice for those of you that uh, have PCs. Here's the Mac version and a Linux version. There's good uh, tutorials on the internet how to set these up. What I would do and what I did when I installed mine was download the Windows installer. You would click here, it would download, and then you would just install it uh, like you do with most software. I'm not going to do it right now because it's quite a large file and takes a long time to download plus I already have it installed on my computer. Once that's downloaded and installed, uh, you should be able to um, start the integrated development environment or the IDE. So I have mine pinned to my start menu. Here's my Arduino IDE. And uh, when you start it up, it looks something like this. It'll come up with an empty sketch and uh, this is uh, how it normally starts. What we're going to do now is uh, practice downloading a sketch into our Arduino and just see if we've got that interface uh, established. So I'm going to go to File and Examples. And these are all examples that you can use. I'm going to use Basic and I'm going to go to this program Blink. This is kind of like the Hello World program for beginning Arduino folks. So if we look at this program, or they're often called sketches, I prefer the terminology program, but sketch is the part of the Arduino vernacular. And all this program does is turns on an LED for one second, then turn it off for one second. And so we see some comments here. We see a setup section where we define one of the digital output pins, number 13, as an output. And this is the main loop. This just runs over and over again, turning pin 13 high, which turns on the LED, delays one second, sets pin 13 low, delays one second, and just does this over and over. So what we want to do now is download this to our Arduino. So a couple of things we need to check first. Up in the Tools menu, you want to make sure you've got the right board selected. Now I've been working with a Metro. This is not the board that I, we're working with now. I'm working with the Uno. So I'm going to go over here to the Uno and click it. Back to Tools, it says now it says Uno. Okay, that's what we want. Now we don't, the port here is grayed out because I haven't connected my Arduino to my computer yet. So I'm going to do that. And see if it can establish a connection. Now the first time you do this, your computer should automatically load the drivers. If it doesn't, um, 
that'll be a problem and you at some point need to look at some of the uh, uh, help screens or get some help from someone that's a more experienced user. Okay, let's go back to our program window now. And so we, what we want to do is download the Blink program to our Arduino. This button is the Verify. This it compiles the program and looks for errors. So if we click that, it says down here, Compiling Sketch. Make sure I don't have that too low. Done compiling. And it uh, didn't find any mistakes. If there was an error in the code, let's say I'm going to delete that semicolon right there and I try to compile it you can see we got an error okay with the semicolon back in it's okay now we're ready to download this is the our upload I guess I should say this is the upload button so I'm going to click on that you'll compile the sketch again and I actually got an error okay wonder what happened one thing I forgot to do was go back here and after I plugged my Arduino in and set the COM port. Okay, so here's port COM5. Okay, now I've got the right board and I've got it connected. All this happens up here at the tools menu. Let's try it again. Compile sketch. Now it's uploading and done uploading. Okay. So that was kind of good to see how these kind of problems can develop. Now let's look over at the board itself. Now you can say, hey, we didn't really put an LED on our system. Why should we expect anything to happen? Most Arduinos and Arduino compatibles have a built-in LED that's attached to digital pin 13. And I'm not sure if our camera will show it, but indeed, this LED on the surface of the board is flashing every one second as we would expect. So that's working just fine. Now what we might like to do now is put an actual LED on the system. So I'm going to grab my LED. LEDs have a positive and negative lead. The lead that's slightly longer is the positive side. This is the shorter one is the ground. I'm going to insert it on my breadboard. There's some good tutorials on breadboard layouts, but just a quick review is that on this style of breadboard, this row of pins are all interconnected, so they're all in common this row is all in common, this row is all in common, and so forth. Now this row is not common with this row, so that those are independent. Along the sides you have power bars, these are all in common, and these are all in common. Okay, So basically if I want to connect to one of these pins now I have a lot of places to put in a jumper. Now one thing that we have to know is that you can't just hook straight 5 volts from the digital pin 13 over here to the positive lead and the negative lead to ground. There, it, the LED would pull too much current. You have to limit the current with a resistor. So on the way to ground, I'm going to put another resistor in here. This is where we used our 220 ohm resistor. Okay. Now, going to ground that, some ground pins over here, and I'm going to hook the positive side of the LED to pin 13. Now these are kind of hard to see sometimes, and it's easy to miss them or get something not quite in the right spot. So now I have it wired up properly. So power is coming out of pin 13, going into the positive lead on the LED, going to the negative, going through the resistor, and then back to ground. So now both LEDs are flashing. But let's say we didn't want to use pin 13. We wanted to use a different pin. 
Let's go back to our program and modify it. Let's make it use pen 11, let's say. Notice there's three places where this has to be changed. Now I'm going to download the new program, or upload I should say. Notice the LED stopped flashing. But if I move the pin over to pin 11, now we're back in operation. We can make this program more efficient. It seems inefficient that we would have to change all these pin numbers if we want to change the hardware layout. So we can add a variable up here, something that's a constant. Learning all the different types of variables and how they're used is an important part of Arduino programming. I'm going to make this an integer. It's a constant, it's an integer. And I'm going to give it a name, um, LED pin. And I'm going to make it equal to 11. Let's compile that real quick just to make sure it's OK. It is. It's good to compile frequently and before you make a lot of changes. Now that we have the LE pin defined, we can paste it in down here at where it's always used. Let's recompile. It worked. Now let's upload the new code. And if we look over there, things seem to be working. Now let's just change this LED pin to 9. Let's change it again. Upload. Our system stopped working. Now let's move down to digital pin 9. And we're working again. So we made a small improvement in our code. So what we've just done is a great example of how you can um, get started with the Arduino IDE and, uh, and make changes to your system. We could do the same thing with the Arduino Metro. Okay. Be another good choice. Although the Arduino Uno is kind of the standard. And I just tested for fun the Arduino Metro Mini. And it worked just fine. Here's the same setup, how you would do that using more of a breadboard layout. One of the things I wanted to show you before we end this session, if you get this far, you're well on your way to doing all kinds of fun prototyping with the Arduino and making some environmental measurements. Now, notice when I went to tools and selected the board, okay, here's what's called the board manager. Here's all the default Arduino boards. But then there's this list of Adafruit boards. There's the Adafruit Metro and the Pro Trinket that we're interested in. Here's also the SparkFun boards. Remember we said the SparkFun Red board would also be a good choice for prototyping in this course. Now, these boards, the Adafruit boards and the SparkFun boards, won't automatically appear if you just download the IDE from the Arduino website. You have to do something special to get these appear. And since a lot of you might be using those, I wanted to point that out real quickly. So a really good tutorial on that, I'm going to go back over to, to uh, Chrome, is this website at Adafruit. It's called the Arduino 1.6.x IDE and gives you a great uh, discussion of how to get these third-party boards into the stock IDE and in fact you can follow right along and I didn't have any problem myself getting it done the first time. One thing you can also do is if you're just using Adafruit boards like the Metro or Metro Mini they have an Arduino version right here instead of downloading 
the IDE from the Arduino website, you could download it from the Adafruit website right here and install it, and the Adafruit boards are going to appear. So if you have some trouble doing this, just go down here and uh, download 1.64 with the Adafruit boards, and actually 1.6.4 uh, will work fine for all the pro uh, examples that we're working with these lessons. So after you do that and you look back at your IDE, and you go to your tools and you look at boards, then your new board should appear. 